The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Money is the root of all evil. Some people spend more time scheming how to get money dishonestly than it would take to earn it honorably. Frank Davidson was one of these. For years, he'd been building an alibi to cover his many dishonorable activities by telling everyone who'd listen that money was the root of all evil. At the same time, he was scheming to get as much money as he could from his uncle George Davidson, who had not only built a fortune, but had also accumulated the love and respect of his fellow citizens. Yes, in bettering himself, George Davidson had likewise helped thousands of others comfortably employed in various Davidson enterprises. As purchasing agent for the Davidson Manufacturing Company, Frank Davidson was in a favorable position to add, through shady and illegitimate means, substantial sums to the liberal salary his uncle paid him. He'd been getting away with this grafting for years until he clashed with Jim Duran, the city's most ruthless racketeer and gangster. You know, Davidson, you're a pretty smart boy. Oh? A lot smarter than people around town think you are. You must net yourself a pretty neat little sum every month. You're crazy, Duran. The commissions I get... Commissions? (laughs) That's pretty cute. I love the way you keep calling that dough you steal commissions. Well, they are commissions. As buyer for the Davidson Manufacturing Company, I consider every bid that comes in. Quit kidding, Davidson. For the last two years, you've been buying second and third rate cement, plaster, and steel... Your uncle's been billed for grade A prices. You've been pocketing the difference as a kickback from the fellas you've been dealing with. I don't think your uncle would like it at all if he knew what you were doing. Well, I can't figure where it concerns you, Duran. Everything that happens in this town concerns me. Besides, I don't like guys that give all their business to my competitors. Competitors? Sure. A couple of months ago, I formed a new company... The Mid-City Service Corporation. We're a sort of a buying and selling agency. We buy and sell steel, cement, plaster, practically everything that Davidson Manufacturing Company uses. Uh, Look, um, Duran, I don't make enough to split. I think you do. And I'll tell you why. First of all, your salary is 6,000 a year. And for a guy making six grand a year, you cover a lot of territory. In October, you drop 700 bucks in one week at Eddie Sansoni's. During November, you dropped the G. Eddie said he'd keep his mouth shut. Eddie works for me. For Christmas, you gave your girlfriend, Helene Franklin, an $1,800 convertible. Last week, you gave her a $1,000 engagement ring. Yeah, you sure do okay for a guy making $6,000 a year. All right, Doran, so I do okay. Where do you come in? Not that simple. We'll handle your deals for you. We'll take care of everything for, oh, say, $150 a week. Retroactive for six months. <laughs> You're out of your mind. You've been buying for my competitors a lot longer than that. But, but I'd owe you thirty-nine hundred dollars in back money. Sure, but look how safe you'll be. If anything goes wrong, you won't appear at all. 
You can just say you had reason to believe the Mid-City Service Corporation was okay. But I can't raise that kind of dough. What's the matter with the old man? My uncle? Yeah, he's a nice old guy. Takes pretty good care of you, from what I hear. Yeah, but he'd, he'd never give me an amount that big without a reason. Give him a reason. Tell him you lost it at Eddie Sansoni's. Tell him Eddie's got your IOUs and he's going to give them to the newspapers or something. The old man will hate to have a scandal. Besides, it'll be a good investment for him. We furnish protection, too. Protection? Yeah. We'll make sure no accidents happen to his employees. Uh, especially his purchasing agent. Oh, one more thing. See that your uncle don't find out about this deal. He might take a notion to talk to the police or somebody. That'd be pretty unhealthy for you. Well, Frank, when you began your double dealing, you didn't dream you'd be interfering with the activities of Jim Duran, did you? Duran knows everything about you, doesn't he? And from now on, he wants in. And you know he's going to expect that $3,900 a week from Friday. You'll have to talk to your uncle about this, won't you, Frank? All right, Frank, let's have it. What's wrong now? Well, you're not going to like it, Uncle George. But it's the same old thing. I need money. $3,900. Now, there's no use beating around the bush. I owe it to Eddie Sansoni. Sansoni? The gambler? That's right. And now you expect me to get you out of this difficulty as I have a dozen others. You know, Frank, you have an idea that because I happen to have earned a good deal of money, it's your job to spend it. <laughs> Why not? What else is money for? Oh, but you're wrong, Frank. You're terribly wrong. Money is a trust, a very serious trust. Wisely used, it makes for a better community. And I'm certainly not going to give you $3,900 to hand over to a crooked gambler. But, Uncle George, listen, you don't get it. The man I owe is Eddie Sansoni. He's a killer. I've only got till next Friday to pay up. Nonsense, nonsense. Just tell the police. You mean you won't let me have the money for Sansoni? Naturally not. Why, it, it would be the worst thing I could do for you, Frank. And another thing, and this is for your own good. Beginning Monday, you're going to work in the factory. This job as purchasing agent hasn't done you any good. Now, wait a minute, Uncle George. If you're going to leave me the business anyway... I'm not going I... to leave you the business. If I did, there wouldn't be any business in five years. But you always said it would all be mine someday. Why, even in your will... I'm changing my will, Frank. Just as soon as my lawyer returns from Washington next week. You mean you're cutting me out of your will permanently? Well, well, that depends. Maybe I'll change my mind in a year or two if... If you'll really settle down. And I hope you will, Frank. Meantime, I owe it to the employees and the people who've put their savings into this business to protect their interests. An unpleasant morning, isn't it, Frank? So unpleasant, you quickly leave the office and go to see your girlfriend, Helene. After all, Helene understands you. And like you, she believes that money is the root of all evil. That is, other people's money. You tell her about Duran, about Uncle George cutting you out of his will, all your difficulties. Helene is not only sympathetic, she's very practical, too. Your uncle can't do a thing like that, cutting you out of his will of all the days. He's doing it. Just as soon as his lawyer gets back from Washington. Uh, when will that be? Sometime next week. Wow. He hasn't cut you out yet, Angel. Oh, what difference does that make? He won't change his mind. Oh, a lot of things can happen in a week, honey. Such as? Take a look at that headline in tonight's paper. Mm -hmm. Wealthy playboy slain in love nest. I don't get you. <laughs> Suppose your uncle had a little love nest, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the closest thing Uncle George has to a love nest is his little cabin out at Clear Lake where he goes to rest up occasionally. And as far as girls are concerned, he doesn't even know they're alive. Well, he's got a secretary, hasn't he? Of course. Oh, from what you say, he pays her a lot of dough. Naturally, she's been with him a long time. Besides, Bill Lawton, her husband, was very badly hurt in an accident a while back and hasn't been able to work since. From what you've told me, Bill's not very happy about it. Mary says he's miserable. Well, suppose Bill Lawton were to think your uncle's interest in Mary was, uh, you know, something more than... Just <laughs> In the mood he's in, you'd probably see headlines bigger than the... What? Hello. 
Lane, I think you've hit on a wonderful idea. A wonderful idea. Except it takes time. A week's a long time, Frank. When it's all you've got. Yeah, it is at that. And this is one time I'm going to move fast. With the prologue of Money is the Root of All Evil, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. You've heard me tell about the more thorough, more conscientious attention cars get at signal service stations because each signal dealer owns his own business and has a personal interest in keeping your goodwill. Well, typical of this is the fan belt and radiator hose checkup now being offered free by signal dealers throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. Being made of rubber, your fan belt and radiator hose not only wear out, but deteriorate from age. Yet few persons ever think to check them until they fail completely and cause serious trouble. That's why this free signal checkup is not only unique, but a real service that every driver will be wise to take advantage of. What's more, if you should discover that your fan belt or radiator hose are in such worn condition that you feel it's wise to replace them, then your signal dealer can, in most cases, do this while you wait. So drop by your nearest signal dealer soon and ask him for this free checkup of your fan belt and radiator hose. It's one of a complete line of safety services offered by signal dealers to help your car run better and last longer. And now back to the whistler. Well, Frank, Elaine gave you quite an idea, didn't she? It would certainly make things easy for both of you if Bill Lawton got the wrong idea about his wife, Mary, being involved with your wealthy Uncle George and killed him in a fit of jealous rage. No one could pin anything on you either. After your years of hypocritical preaching that money is the root of all evil, you're sure nobody would ever connect you with your uncle's sudden death. But you know you'll have to act fast plant the seed of suspicion in Bill Lawton's mind. So a few moments after leaving Helene's apartment, you're in Bill Lawton's living room. Well, Bill, how are things going? Okay. I guess it gets pretty lonesome sitting around the house all day, huh? Oh, I manage. Yeah, I know how it is. Trouble is, I can't keep living on Mary's dough. I didn't marry her to get myself a meal ticket. Well, if Mary doesn't object, why should you? It's up to me to be working, not her. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it, Bill. After all, my uncle's pretty generous to her. Yeah, no. He's a nice old guy. But I'll feel a whole lot better when I'm paying the bills. <laughs> now, don't worry. Uncle George always gets his money's worth. Yeah, I know. Mary's a pretty terrific secretary. And a pretty neat addition to the office, too. <laughs> I don't blame Uncle George for keeping her to himself. Yeah. It's been awfully busy down there lately, hasn't it? Busy? Nothing. It's practically dead. Oh, but then things always slow up this time of year. Dead? But Mary's been working overtime two nights last week. She has? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, wait a second. Besides being purchasing agent, you're sort of an all-around assistant to your uncle, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Well, if you work slake, how come you don't know about it? Oh, well, I'm out calling on clients most of the time. Don't deal about and... Mary working nights when things are so slow. Well, as far as that's concerned, I don't either. But then Uncle George does a lot of things he doesn't tell me about. Don't worry about it, Bill. Listen, why don't you come into town for lunch someday soon? It'll do you good. Frank. Yeah? Is there anything between your uncle and my wife? What? <laughs> what on earth made you think of a thing like that? I've been thinking about it for quite a while. <laughs> Well, you've planted the seed, Frank. You've set Bill to wondering in earnest about your Uncle George and his wife, Mary. And now you must nurture that seed so it will sprout and grow quickly. The next day, Bill himself makes it easy for you. Frank Davidson speaking. This is Bill Lawton, Frank. You busy? I'm well, not too busy to talk to you, boy. What's on your mind? Could you run out to my place for a few minutes? Well, I guess so, if it's important. It's important to me. 
Okay, fella, I'll be right out. You know what he wants, don't you, Frank? And you're sure you've got all the answers, the right answers. You're sure of yourself. Please, too, as you reach for your hat. And then your phone rings once more. Hello, Frank Davidson speaking. You know who this is, Frank? Uh, yes, it's Jim... Never mind the name. I thought I told you not to mention our little conversation to your uncle. I didn't, Jim, honestly. I told him exactly what you told me to tell him. Now, that's funny. A couple of guys with badges came over this morning and asked to see the books of the Mid-City Service Company. Oh, I didn't have anything to do with it. I hope not. For your sake. If you did, it's going to be too bad for you. Duran? Hello? Duran? Leaving your office following Duran's phone call, you know you have to move fast. You're sure if your plans go through, you'll have no trouble stalling off Duran until you come into control of your uncle's fortune. And as you enter Bill Lawton's apartment, and note the grim expression on his face, you're equally sure your plans for the death of your uncle through Bill Lawton will work. You handle Bill to perfection. Frank, tell me the truth about your uncle and my wife. Oh, now wait a minute, Bill. If you I think... said the truth, Frank. I'm telling you the truth. As a matter of fact, we were crazy when we even gave a thought to the two nights Mary worked overtime last week. Do you know what? I found out Uncle George wasn't even at the office those nights. He wasn't. Then what was Mary uh, doing? Uncle George took out his work to the cabin at Clear Lake. Uh, he often does that when he snowed under. And Mary worked in town? Naturally. At least I thought. <laughs> Where else? Nice try, Frank. But it doesn't gel. Mary told me she took 40 pages of dictation... If he was at the cabin at Clear Lake, she was too. Well, now, Bill, maybe you're just jumping at conclusions. Wait a minute, Bill. What are you going to do with that gun? Nothing right now. Just wanted to be sure it was here and loaded. The next time Mary tells me she's working at night, I'm going to go out to your uncle's cabin at Clear Lake. Bill, you're nuts. And if Listen. I find what I think I'll find, this gun's going to get quite a workout. Bill, I'm home. Oh, hello, Frank. Bill. Bill, what on earth are you doing with that pistol? Oh, uh, he was just showing it to me, Mary. Oh, guns make me nervous. For goodness sakes, put it back in the desk, Bill. Bill? Okay, Mary. Since when have you become interested in firearms, Frank? Uh, well, uh, I got myself into a jam with Jim Durant. Jim... I mean, uh, Eddie Sansoni. Jim Durant, that gangster? I said Eddie Sansoni. He's uh, pushing me pretty hard. And uh, uh, Bill thought that I might need some protection, so he offered me his revolver. Oh, that's ridiculous, Frank. Why don't you go to the police? You don't know what you're saying. Well, at least tell your uncle he's let you have money before. <gasps> money, money, money. That's all I ever hear. Sansoni's got plenty, but he wants more. My uncle's loaded with it, and he keeps working. Everybody talks about money. Everybody wants money. It's, it's like I've always said. Money is the root of all evil. Well, you, you take right now... It wouldn't hurt Uncle George to just help me out one more Frank. time. Frank, I, I don't think you're being very fair. Your uncle's been wonderful to you. He's been wonderful to you, too, hasn't he, baby? He's been wonderful to us, Bill. Oh, now, wait a minute, kiddies. Don't, don't let my troubles upset you. Thanks for offering me your gun, Bill. But uh, I, I guess Mary's right. Carrying a gun would be silly. Well, I'll see you at the office tomorrow, Mary. So long, Bill. So long, Frank. Bye, Frank. You realize that your big problem now is to get your uncle and Mary together at your uncle's cabin at Clear Lake. And this should be easy. But a day passes. Then another. And another. Finally, on the fourth day, half your problem is solved as Uncle George summons you to his office. Frank, uh... You wouldn't mind dining out this evening, would you? Oh, no, why? Well, I, uh, I thought I'd spend the night at the cabin. Well, that's a good idea, Uncle George. You go ahead. I'll probably do a little work at the office. Now, Frank, solving the other half of your problem should be very simple. You can play on Mary's loyalty to your uncle and the company, and she'll agree to anything you suggest. 
Though a few minutes after your uncle leaves, you stop at Mary's desk. Uh, Mary, would you mind working with me tonight so we can have that Carson estimate ready in the morning? Oh, Frank. You know how Bill hates to have me out at night. Oh, I don't think you'll mind. He understands you have to work overtime occasionally. And I'd hate to see us lose that Carson account. Okay. Okay, I'll phone him right away. Oh, that's swell. Thanks a lot, Mary. I'll see you at the office about half past seven, huh? That was easy, wasn't it, Frank? You can see the expression on Bill Lawton's face when Mary phones about working late. You can even see him hang up the phone, cross the room to his desk, open the drawer and remove his revolver, go out to his car and start for Clear Lake. So you go out for a quick snack, smoke impatiently until 7.30, and then go to the office where Mary is waiting for you. Hi, Mary. Uh, I sure do get bad breaks. You won't be able to help me after all. Now, Frank, don't tell Uncle me... Uncle George wants you to go out to the cabin at Clear Lake right away. Can't... Why? He didn't say anything you about... You got me. All I know is he got a telegram before he left. Then he told me to get in touch with you and tell you to come out right away with your notebook. He says it's very important. Well, I guess there's nothing else to do. Uncle George said to use the company car, so I put it out in front for you. Okay. Here, here's the keys. Thank you, Frank. Oh, say, did you hear about Jim Duran being arrested? Uh, no, I didn't. Is he in jail? No. No, he's out on bail. Well, see you tomorrow, Frank. Hope you get that cost estimate out all right. Don't worry. Everything will be taken care of tonight. It has to be. Well, there it is, Frank. The last detail fitted into place. But you have to make certain there are no mistakes. You hurry out to your own car, pick up Helene, and head toward Clear Lake. Your car roars past Mary's car within a few miles, and you leave her behind. Suddenly, your heart almost stops beating. Other headlights following you along the highway. Jim Duran. It must be Jim out on bail, and you're sure he's out to get you. But if tonight goes according to plan, you'll have more than a million dollars, and Jim Duran will be a problem no longer. You park some 300 yards from the cabin. There's no sign of the other car. You tell Helene to keep the motor running and walk towards the cabin. Halfway there, you spot Bill Lawton's car parked behind a tree with a clear view of the cabin where Uncle George has already turned on the lights. All you need to do now is wait for Mary to arrive. And then her husband, Bill Lawton, will do the rest. And you haven't long to wait. Mary steps down from the company car and walks rapidly to the cabin and enters the open door. Your heart beats quickly as you watch Bill open the door of his car, slip out without a sound, walk slowly to the cabin and enter the open door. For a moment, everything is quiet. Then you hear the sounds you've been waiting for. Bill! Bill, what are you doing here? Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, a word about these chilly nights and mornings we've been having. To be sure your car will start pronto the instant you touch the starter, you naturally want to be sure you're choosing the gasoline that's tops in quality. But how can the average driver measure gasoline quality? Why, by mileage, of course. Which explains why we're so proud of Signal's good mileage which has made it known throughout the West from Canada to Mexico as the go-farther gasoline. You see, there's only one way today's signal gasoline can give you such good mileage. That's by helping your motor run more efficiently. And when your motor runs more efficiently, you just naturally enjoy quicker starting, faster pickup, smoother knock-free power. In other words, the superior performance you expect of a superior gasoline. That's why Signal says, to be sure of the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two things to remember. One, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now back to the whistler. When you hear the shots from Bill's gun, you're sure your worries are behind you, aren't you, Frank? Tomorrow you'll be head of Davidson Enterprises. You can marry Helene. Pay off Duran. Your lies about your Uncle George and his secretary, Bill Lawton's wife, 
work like a charm, assuring him and arousing him to the jealous fury culminating in the shooting you've just heard. You're almost jubilant as you run to your car. Tell Helene the good news and step on the gas. A moment later, you feel differently. That strange car is right behind you again. Now you're sure it's Duran, the gangster who believes you're responsible for his arrest. You want to stop, explain things, but you're afraid. And you're sure that once he knows of your uncle's death, you can handle him. You've got to get away. You press down on the gas. Why so fast? That car behind us, Helene. It's Duran. Oh, how do you know? I just know, that's all. Soon you're doing 50. Then 60. Then 70. Then 75. Be careful, Frank. Slow down that curve. Where, where am I? In the Davidson Memorial Hospital. And you're going to be all right. How about Helene? The girl who was with me. She's pretty badly hurt, but she'll recover. And uh, we hope that plastic surgery may help her face. Hello, Davidson. Huh? Who are you? Chief of Police Roberts. Lucky for you, we were following you last night when you had that crash. If we hadn't been, you and your girlfriend would be dead pigeons. You mean it wasn't Duran? No. No, it was the police, all right. You talked too much the day Mary Lawton came home and found you and her husband fooling with that gun. She tipped us off. We've been tailing you ever since, for your own protection. Incidentally, Bill Lawton told us how you tried to get him to kill your uncle with your lies about him and Mary. Kill my uncle? That's, that's insane. Just because Bill Lawton might have gotten mixed up on something I said doesn't mean a thing. It's his word against mine. In a few days, I'll be president of the Davidson Manufacturing Company. You'll be... Wait start- a minute. I've got a little surprise for you. Come in, please. Uh, Uncle George. Yes, Frank. Uncle George. But I thought... Yeah, you thought they were dead, didn't you? But those shots... They were quite harmless. Blanks. Mary substituted. If she hadn't, we wouldn't be here. Yes, Davidson, that phony alibi you tried to build, that line about money is the root of all evil... Isn't going to get you out this time. It's too bad you never understood the right use of money, Frank. You're like a lot of others, Davidson. Belittling money, success, misquoting. Uncle George, you taught me to believe the Bible. The Bible says money's the root of all evil. No, Frank, no. The Bible says that love of money is the root of all evil. Not money itself. There's a difference, Frank. A big difference. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System.